The next non-refundable credit we will discuss is the Child and Dependent Care Credit. The tax code offers a benefit for taxpayers who incur expenses while they work in providing care for their children or other dependents. It's based on a percentage of the expenses that were incurred for the care of a qualified dependent. And, of course, there are requirements, exceptions, and limitations. Let's begin by describing who is eligible to take the credit, and then I'll mention what expenses qualify toward the credit. To be eligible to claim this credit, taxpayers must show that they have met several requirements. The care must have been provided for one or more qualifying individuals. The care must have been provided so the taxpayer and the spouse, if married, can work, look for work, or attend school full time. The taxpayer must have earned income. Taxpayers who are married and living together must both have earned income. The taxpayer and the person for whom the care was provided must live in the same home. The caregiver cannot be the taxpayer's spouse, the parent of the qualifying child, or someone the taxpayer can claim as a dependent. Services provided by the taxpayer's child under age 19 do not qualify, even if that child is not a dependent. The taxpayer's filing status must be single, head of household, qualifying widow with dependent, or married filing jointly. If your client qualifies for this credit, Form 2441 should be filed. The name of the person receiving the care and the name of the person providing the care need to be listed on the form so that the IRS can assure that the caregiver is reporting the income. The caregiver's Social Security number must also appear on the form. Here are a few additional guidelines for using this credit. Who qualifies? Children must be under age 13 at the time the care was provided, and the child must be the taxpayer's dependent. The taxpayer's spouse or dependent who is mentally or physically incapable of caring for himself also qualifies. Let me reiterate, the child care provider cannot be a dependent of the taxpayer and cannot be a child of the taxpayer under age 19, even if he is not a dependent. What does that mean? Let's say your client had an 18-year-old daughter who also worked at a part-time job. She lived in the home with your client who wanted to pay her to care for a younger child. That is not allowed. The caregiver needs to be at least 19 years of age. Another qualifying provision of this credit is that your client must have earned income. If it's a married filing joint return, both parents must have earned income. This child care credit is not designed to allow one spouse to work while the other is off playing tennis or golf. It is designed to allow both parents to work. Usually, married couples must file a joint tax return in order to get the dependent care credit. If they're filing separately and want to use this credit, they may need to file using the head of household designation. Under that rule, they would be eligible to claim the child and dependent care credit. In order to claim the dependent care credit, as head of household, the qualifying child must live in the home for more than half the year. If the parents were not separated for at least six months, the head of household cannot take the child tax credit. Also, in order to qualify for the credit, the taxpayer must pay more than half the cost of maintaining the home. A qualifying individual is still considered living with the taxpayer even if he did not live there for the full year. Perhaps he was born that year, died that year, was away to college, went into the service, or something of that nature. What about divorced parents? Generally, the qualifying taxpayer is the one who is providing the financial resources for the dependent receiving care. If the taxpayer is divorced or separated, he may qualify for an exception to this rule. Only the custodial parent can claim the credit for child care. That means the non-custodial parent may not claim the credit even though he can claim the exemption. Yet, the custodial parent can claim the credit even if he does not claim the exemption. Here are some guidelines for tax credit qualifications for spouses of students and spouses who may be disabled. The taxpayer is treated as having earned income for any month that he is a full-time student as long as he was in school for at least five months of the tax year. The months do not have to be consecutive and the school cannot include night school, trade school, or correspondence courses. If the spouse is physically or mentally disabled or unable to care for himself, Form 2441 should be filled out appropriately. Of course, there are rules and exceptions which are listed in your workbook. What are qualified expenses? 
The broad definition of qualifying expenses is that they must be work-related. Expenses are considered work-related if they allow the taxpayer or the spouse to work, look for work, or attend school full-time for at least five months in the year. Expenses are also considered work-related when the taxpayer or spouse is disabled. The expenses are for the primary purpose of assuring the well-being and protection of a qualifying person. Simply put, the expense must allow the taxpayer to work or attend school. Employer-provided dependent care benefits affect the amount of qualified expenses that a taxpayer can claim. The dependent care that was paid by the employer will show up on the W-2. This amount is entered on the second page of Form 2441. You must complete page 2 of 2441 before you do page 1 in order to show how much the total expense was versus the total income your client received from the employer for the child care benefit. As long as your client spent more or equal to the amount the employer provided, there's no problem. However, if your client did not spend all the money that was provided for child care, the remainder becomes part of the taxpayer's ordinary income and, as such, is taxable. Details on the application for this credit are explained in the workbook. It is important to understand all the rules for the child and dependent care credit in order to fill out the forms properly.